Y'all, let's give God the glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Come on, y'all, let's begin to give God glory for bringing us through another week, for bringing us through another day. Our God is faithful. Our God is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, y'all, let's begin to magnify him. For our Father is worthy. He's seeking worshipers. Hallelujah. True worshipers that will pour out their hearts to him. Hallelujah. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, commit your works to the Lord that your thoughts or your plans will be successful. So Father, in the name of Jesus, as I pray on the topic of business, Father, bless everybody as they go about their endeavors in the name of Jesus. You said in your word that we'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, blessed when we go. I decree a blessing over your people tonight in the name of Jesus, that it doesn't matter what it looks like, it doesn't matter what it seems like, we go by what your word declares. Your word declares we are are healed hallelujah your word declares that we are blessed your word declares that we are the head and not the tail so we receive every heavenly blessing in the name of Jesus because we are the seed of Abraham because you are our righteousness and because it's a finished work we give you glory because it's already done we give you praise from the place called done so father in the name of Jesus for the one that's seeking a miracle God I thank you God that you are a miracle worker I thank you God that even in the last minute God you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask think or imagine God you said in your word of my people who are called by my name hallelujah will humble ourselves and pray to seek our, your face God and turn from our wicked ways Lord you said in your word that you were here from heaven heal our hallelujah forgive our sins and heal our land God our land needs healing today heal our land oh God in the name of Jesus heal families today God in the name of Jesus we're crying out to you God you said in your word Lord that you look throughout the earth to show yourself strong father show yourself mighty show yourself mighty show yourself mighty on our behalf in the name of Jesus this is the generation that seeks after you this is the generation that seeks your faith God this is the generation that seeks your heart God we don't go after your hand God but we go after your heart because we know when we seek your heart you will turn over your hand so God we give you glory we don't go after things because your word declares seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added so father have your way in this place like never before hallelujah have your way like never before God give us a sensitivity to your spirit God let us be aware of your presence everywhere that we go God hallelujah and when there's a need God help us to be sensitive enough to discern the need in the name of Jesus to be your hands to be your feet God to be your heartbeat in the earth he said who was who will go for me and Isaiah stood up he said send me I'll go I'll go to the nations I'll show love to my neighbor I'll show love to the one that feels like they're forgotten father we will go and be your heartbeat in the earth in the name of Jesus we shall go and be your hands and feet in the earth in the name of Jesus and father we give your name our honor and glory that is due you father renew the passion oh God for ministry all over again for the one that's lost their passion for ministry the one that was ready to give up God let them know be not weary and well doing hallelujah for in due season you shall reap 
if you faint not for the one that's ready to give up our decree and declare that you shall not die in this season in the name of Jesus but you shall live hallelujah and Lord God for the weary heart Lord you said in your word come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest I pray a rest on your people like never before God I pray rest oh God I pray rest in this season oh God that they will know that we can rest in you no matter what the storm is saying right now we can rest in you God in the midst of the storm you rested oh God and then you got up and spoke to it so we speak to it right now by the kingdom authority that you've given us in the name of Jesus now father God I pray for families oh God that there be a level of restoration oh God let there be peace in families like never before and we count it all done by faith in Jesus name amen We give you glory. We give you praise, oh God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you, oh God, for being the great God, the mighty God, the strong God. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for being everything to us, oh God. God, you said in your word, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. L love, it does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. It keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when everything is truth and it wins. Love never gives up. Love never loses its faith. It always hopeful and endures through every circumstances. And God, we thank you for your love tonight, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that we feel your love tonight. We thank you, oh God, that you love us in spite of what we do. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, for sending your son, oh God, to die on the cross just for us, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, that you love us so much, that you gave us another opportunity, another time, oh God, to lift up your name, to give you praise, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, for your love. We thank you, oh God, for your love, for your kindness, oh God, for your grace, oh God. Oh God, we ask you right now to let us love one another, oh God. Let us be united together, oh God. Let us be as one, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for this love, oh God. And God, if we don't know how to love, oh God, teach us how to love, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let love just abide abide in us oh god you said oh god in your word love cast it covers all sins oh god love covers all sin and god we thank you right now for the love that you have given us oh god we thank you oh god we magnify your name oh god we exalt your name oh god we thank you oh god for your love oh god we thank you oh god for your peace we thank you oh god for your strength oh god we thank you oh god for who you are we thank
because you are great. You are great. You are mighty. You are strong, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for your love, oh God. We thank you for your love. Pour out. Pour out your love. Pour out your love. This country needs you. Pour out the love. This nation needs you. Pour out your love. We need you, oh God. Pour out your love. Overflow us with your love. Overflow us with your peace. Overflow us with your joy. Overflow us, oh God, with your strength, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. We magnify you because you are good. You are a perfect God. You do all things well, and we give you thanks. We honor you, oh Jesus. We glorify your name, oh God. Oh God, I ask you right now to help us all, oh God. Emotionally, oh God. Get our emotion intact, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Because it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. And we claim it right now that it is so. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you this evening, Father. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. We thank you that in this day and age and in this season, Lord God, in the body of Christ Jesus, Lord God, we're moving forward. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that our hearts are inclined to you. Our ears are listening to you. Our eyes are focused on you. We thank you this evening, oh Father, in the name of Jesus and Christ, as we prepare to enter in. We thank you that the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into worship. Worship in the Spirit. Worship, Lord God, that we let go of ourselves and we worship you because of who you are. We worship because you are God. We worship because you are a spirit. Woo! Hey. So we move now and we shift now in our thinking process. We let go of the day. We let go of that that's behind us. We let go of that that's on the side of us so we can focus on you. You are our God. You are our Father. You are our Papa. And we love you so much. We count it a privilege and an honor to worship. Oh, we know that in worship, Lord God, we are transformed. You no longer see us, but you see the blood of Jesus over our lives. So tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said in your word in Psalms 23 that the Lord is my shepherd. And we decree and declare that you are our shepherd. Not only our shepherd, but you are the shepherd of this nation. And we thank you. We bless you for that. And we understand, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that your word also tells us in the book of Hebrews that you would never leave nor forsake us. And so we stand here tonight to tell you, we ain't going nowhere. We're not moved by what we see. We're only moved by your spirit and it's engaging us, Lord God. We engage with it and then we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that signs will follow your word tonight. As the man of God, your tarosa, your your pastor that you set up in this place, God, we thank you, Lord God, as he teaches, as he preaches, as he sings, as he speaks your word. Signs, miracles, will follow. We decree it now in the name of Jesus. Those that are sick will be healed. Those, Lord God, that don't feel good in their mind, Lord God, we declare that they are healed. We declare that they are set free, Lord God. We declare it now in this house, Lord God, that they won't have to wait to get well soon, but they will get well now, tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We don't have anybody else. We're not looking to man. We're not looking at circumstances and situations. We have our eyes on you. And we know that you are the ancient of days. You are the great and the mighty God. We know that you're the alpha and then you're the omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. And Lord, I read in the book of Job. Hey. You are the preserver of mankind you preserve us 
and we want to tell you thank you. You have given to some of us, Lord God, things in this season and what man calls a pandemic. Hey, we call it it's a season of grace. It's a season of increase for the body, for the ecclesia. We declare it so in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we don't want for nothing. We don't want for nothing. You said in your word in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, I've already given you everything, 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 every substance, every financial blessing, every promotion, whatever. So you said you've already given unto us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So tonight we just come alongside of what your word has already said. What you said before the foundation of the world. What you said, Lord, ancient of days. What you say. We come alongside tonight. And we decree that 2 Peter chapter 1 and 3 is alive and well in each one of our lives. Individually and corporately. It says the name of Yahshua, whose we are that we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Oh my God, he's doing great things. Let's give God the glory. How many are ready to move forward? Hallelujah, God, we so thankful. And I have to say it just like that. I'm so thankful, almost like a little kid. My faith is renewed just like that. That I believe when God says it, I just believe. We are still in a different decade. Just the scripture that she just brought, that God has given us everything for life and godliness. Whew, that did something to me. We're so thankful, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things I may new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Is that your declaration today? Oh, I'm moving forward. Can we just stand together as a collective body? Oh, I'm not going, I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. Here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things I may do. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Hallelujah. That sounds amazing, y'all. We're going to say it like one collective body. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. Things are made new, surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, I'm moving forward. Moving forward. Has anybody made that decision to keep moving forward? Said I'm moving forward. Moving forward. Oh! 
for a blessing us to move forward, God. Oh, you may. May all things new. Yes, you may. All things new. And I will follow you forward. Come on, y'all, make that declaration in this place. You may. Worship 
together way maker way make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are he's so faithful so faithful way maker miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is worship you Lord we worship you you are here and you're turning lives around we worship you Lord we worship you way maker way maker miracle you're a promise Keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a way, make a miracle. Promise keep, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a way, make a way, make miracle. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We bless your name. We bless your name. We make miracle He's a promise keeper. But God, you kept my family. So 
Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel you, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You're my healer, provider, sustain, way maker. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Yes, God. Your promises are yes and amen. 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 Your promises. Oh, yes and amen. Oh, your promises. Oh, yes and amen. Your promises. Oh, yes and amen. Your promises. Oh, yes and amen. We declare your word in this place, God. Your promises. Oh, yes and amen. We believe your word. Oh, yes and amen. We believe your word. Oh, yes and amen. We stand on your word. Your promises are yes and amen. 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 We declare, we declare, we declare your promises. Oh, yes and amen, your promises. Oh, yes and amen, your promises. Oh, yes and amen. Woo. Yes, God. Oh, yes and amen. That means it's finished. Yes. And we can worship you from the place called done. So your promises are yes and amen. Your promises. It says hide the word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. So Lord, we hide your word in our hearts, God. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises are yes and amen. Promises are yes and amen. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises are yes and amen. Oh, promises are yes and amen. Your promises are yes. We declare your word, Lord. Your promises are yes and amen. We trust. Lord, we trust you, Lord. Yes you are way maker. Promises. You are our healer, yes Lord. And, and you're the light promises. in the darkness, God. Yes and amen. Last time, your promises are oh yes. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises. Yes and amen. Let's say that together. Your promises are yes and amen. 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 It doesn't matter what it looks like. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises are yes and amen. Your promises. Oh, yes and amen, your promises are oh, yes and amen. Come on, y'all, let's give God the glory. Hallelujah, for he is worthy. Hallelujah. Hey, FTC family. Thank you for joining us today. 
take a look at what's happening this week at Fervent Prayer. Are you on Facebook? Tune into Facebook Live every week for our small group segments. Celebrity Saints, Mondays at 7 p.m. Divorce Care, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. And coming to you this month, Real Relationships, Esther and Eve, and Leveling Up with Landra. Be sure to like and follow us for updates on all of our groups. Do you have a special talent or skill that you'd like to use to uplift the Lord and His kingdom? Well, we want you. For all inquiries, please email administrator at fpcindy.com. Couldn't get enough of service? Or did you miss it? Never miss another service by downloading the FPC Indy app today. Available in the App Store and the Google Play Store. November is a new month, which means we have a new series. Introducing the Grace of Giving. Tune in online or worship in person Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. We're still believing in God for a COVID-19 vaccine, and we're asking you to stand in agreement with us. Until God moves, we must obey the laws of the land, so we are asking all indoor worshipers to wear their mask and practice social distancing at all times. Let prayer be the best part of your morning. Join FPC's morning prayer call every day at 6.30 a.m. Thank you to all that helped to make this year's Trunk or Treat a success. And thank you to all of our parents that brought their children out for treats. Get certified in prayer by attending the James William Jackson School of Prayer. Registration is just $65. Follow the link below to get registered today. Your prayer life will thank you. Returning this November, Children's Church, every first Sunday, ages 4 to 12 and Teen Ministry every second and fourth Sunday, ages 13 to 18. Mark your calendars, ladies, for our ladies shopping trip taking place on December 19th. We will be Cincinnati bound having lunch at Papa Do's and shopping at the mall afterwards. All attendees will only be responsible for lunch and shopping expenses. Register today by emailing administrator at fpcindy.com. Bourbon Prayer Church is both pleased and honored to host and witness the beautiful union of Artelia Lovelace and Lonnie Richardson here at the Bourbon Prayer Church on December 5th at 3 p.m. We know that this year has been filled with many challenges, so if you or your family are in need of support, please reach out to our member services team by email at administrator at fpcindy.com or by phone at 317-898-2751, extension 104. And now, let's get back to our worship service. Remember, you belong here. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, God bless you, and uh, we thank God for the worship service on tonight. We're going to worship the Lord in giving tonight. And uh, those of you who are watching uh, at home or at work or wherever you are, thank you for joining us on tonight for our Wednesday night worship, stu uh, worship service and Bible study. And so glad to have you on the online worship um, in Indianapolis and across America and different parts of the world. Thank you for being part of the worship service on tonight. You know, there are a lot of ways to uh, sow into the ministry and um, you can uh, give by using uh, Cash App. Uh, you'll see it there on the screen, Givelify. Uh, you can also give uh, right here in the auditorium using the electronic devices, Checks uh, Cash. Uh, we thank you for your support. And uh, certainly if you'd like to mail your tithe and offering in, you can do that. You can mail it to P.O. Box 361326. Indianapolis, Indiana, 46236. Again, that's P.O. Box 361326, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46236. I want to pray over your giving. You know, the Bible says, Give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto you. And so I believe that God will raise up those 
who will use their power, influence, and authority to help you in every area of your life. I want you to pray about what to give on tonight, those of you here and those of you out there, to pray about what to give tonight and follow the witness of your heart. Our Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship around your word. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to give on tonight. We've come to worship you and we thank you for this time of fellowship. And we ask, uh, Father, that according to your word, for those who will honor you with their substance and with the first fruits of all their increase, Father God, that you would do according to your word. We pray that the places where you have your money will be full and that the places that you need new streams of wealth and income will come into your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, and we thank you for your giving on tonight. Um, if you'd like to come and, and give your offering, you can come from where you are and do that. You can also avail yourself to the electronic devices here in the auditorium. Amen. Man. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. certainly enjoyed the fervent prayer worship team. Did you all enjoy them tonight? And uh, we certainly thank God for all the new additions to the fervent prayer worship team. Uh, in answer to prayer, fer fervent worship team is growing. And we thank God for that. And certainly if you'd like to be a part of the fervent prayer worship team, please let us know and we will get you going. Give me a little more volume if you can uh, on this mic, this lapel, lapel mic here. I don't know if I need to move it up some or something so that you can hear me. All right, are we good? All right, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number eight, verses one through seven. 2 Corinthians chapter eight, verses one through seven, and these are the Apostle Paul's letters, 1st and 2nd Corinthians to the believers in Corinth. And um, we're gonna focus on these seven verses as it uh, pertains to the grace of giving. The New King James Version, moreover brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord. And I want you to make a note of that in verse 5. And this is how they were able to really, really give. And I think this is something that we really need to do now. They first gave themselves to God. 
and then to us by the will of God. So they, they didn't give because they were committed to Paul and the other disciples, but they gave first because they were committed to God. And I want you to see the chronological order of that, that I, I'm not giving and I don't want to give to impress a person. Although man might be impressed with your gift. Thank you. But it's more important to give yourself to God because you really cannot give what you need to give or how you need to give until you hear from God. You can't really give how you need to give or what you need to give until you've given yourself to God. And I always tell people, I say, pray about what to give and then follow the witness of your heart. So they gave themselves, these believers in Corinth, these Macedonian believers, they gave them, they, they also gave themselves to God and to the apostles. And it was the will of God for them to do so. In verse 6, he says, So we urge Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. Listen to that. So he would also complete this grace. So giving and giving according to the will of God is a grace. You can't just do it. Unless, you can't just do it right unless you have the grace for it. And you just don't automatically have the grace for it. Now, there are people who have the gift of giving. There are people who are members of our church. They have faith for the gift of giving. And I thank God for every one of them. I thank God for everybody that gives. And I thank God for those who have the gift of faith for giving. And we might call them extravagant givers but all of us can grow in our giving all of us need to grow in our giving so we're going to talk a lot about that and uh, that is our theme for uh, November it might even be our theme going into December because it's so critically important you can never receive what God has for you until you learn how to give. It has been called the law of reciprocity. It has been called uh, the law of sowing and reaping. The other uh, Sunday, my wife and I were on our way home from church and uh, from worship, and when we turned left on, off of uh, 38th Street onto German Church Road, right next to CVS, there was a farmer with his big expensive machine and he was harvesting his crops and that was just one of his crops and every now and then and you might have seen him too he driving down German church going to his crops and harvesting his crops now he didn't just have that one little crop right there next to CVS he's got a whole lot of them down German church road and the reason why he has them Pastor Hobson, is because he put seed in the ground. <laughs> See, he, he's not harvesting what don't belong to him. And, and that machine that he is using to harvest his crops is a very expensive machine. I remember when I was growing up, um, they, they would hire us and we would go out to shuck corn. And they take us out on the yellow school buses way out in the country somewhere, and we'd get on the tractor, and we'd uh, shuck the corn. Bugs all over you, fingers getting cut up and all that sort of thing. And uh, we'd, we'd ride all day, all morning in the hot sun, in the rain, shucking corn. Well, those jobs don't exist for us anymore <clears throat> because the farmer, he got a machine, technology, that does all the shucking for him. 
And it's amazing. Now, here's my point. That machine doesn't cost $20,000. That's probably a two, dollars $300,000 machine. Maybe it costs a little more than that. But because he has a harvest every year, he's able to buy what he needs to harvest more crops. <laughs> oh, y'all better come and get me. I feel like running through truth. So as much seed as he puts in the ground, he has the equipment to harvest the crop. Now, here's what God is going to do for you as you grow in your giving, as you grow in the grace of giving. God is going to begin to give you what you need to take in the harvest. Well, you can't take in the harvest if you're sick. So God going to bless your machine <laughs> to stay healthy so you can get the checks and cash the check. Or at 38th and Arlington, they might say, go get that bag. But you can't go get no bag if you can't get up and go get it. So God going to heal your go-get so you can bring in a harvest. Somebody shout harvest. I won't get too far ahead of myself. So he says, grow, see, he says that as, as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. God has a plan for you to be a full-grown giver. <laughs> Do I have any full-grown givers in the building? Do I have any full-grown givers right there? Y'all got my couch cam ready? because I want to talk to some of y'all full-grown givers right there. Uh, our chief of staff, she got a little grandson. His name is Thresito. I call him Thresito the Cheeto. <laughs> I don't know if he likes Cheetos, but it just rhymes. And uh, he's on the fast track. He's crawling. He, he's really ambitious, and, and, and he's really aggressive. And, and he's, just, he's just about one, one years old. And they had him up here walking. <laughs> but he didn't start out walking. He, had to, he didn't even start out crawling. None of us did. And you went from being on your back to getting on your belly to pulling up. How many, how many of y'all know you got to learn how to pull up? And after you learn how to pull up, uh, then, then you start crawling around and you fall down a little bit. And then after a while, you start wobbling a little bit and you start walking around. And eventually, you walk in straight. Now, if you are uh, 15 and 21 years old and you're still wobbling around, it, it, either, either you lit or, or something else wrong with you. <laughs> See, at 15, you should be walking on your own. At 21, you, you should be walking and driving on your own. And by 31, you should be living on your own in Jesus' name. <laughs> All I'm trying to tell you, when you get saved, you start out with the very pediatrics of giving. You start out in that grace. Now, to grow in the grace of giving, you got to do it. That's how you grow in it. So, Paul says, we urge Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. So, you need a giving coach. And tonight, I am your giving coach. That's my couch cam right here. And those of you sitting on the couch, I'm your giving coach tonight. I got a kangaroo bounce coach. I got a cycling coach. We need coaches to tell us how to do it. And uh, the cycling, my, my cycling, my bootleg cycling coaches, because <laughs> they're not licensed. 
but, but they've been, I hope they're not watching, but, but, but they've been riding longer than me. Yolanda, they've been riding longer than me. So I listened to them. And when I got my, my, bike, my road bike, I had a kickstand. I put a kickstand on it. It didn't come with one. It didn't come with one. And so they said, they said you need to take that kickstand off of there. <laughs> I had a kickstand on it, and, and I had all kind of stuff going on because that's how I remember riding a bike. See, when I was growing up, I had a bike, had a kickstand on it, had all that kind of thing on it. And they said, well, th th that bike you got is a roll bike, and it's designed to ride. And if it's sitting still, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So you don't need a kickstand on a bike you're supposed to be riding. So I said, I'm going to keep my kickstand on there anyway. It's my bike. And when I'm not on it, I need to see it standing up. I ain't going to lay this bike on the ground. But as I began to see other riders and I began to see what they were doing and how this works, I went out in the garage and took my kickstand off. Because, <laughs> see, you're not a rider if you got a kickstand on the bike. Did you hear what I said? Uh, <laughs> uh, other riders are going to see you. I don't care what kind of bike you got. If they see a kickstand on it, you're not a rider. Because there are certain things that riders do that makes them a rider. <laughs> now, if you say you're a giver and you still got a kickstand on your wallet, You're not a giver yet. <laughs> I'm your giving coach. And, and, and I'm not telling you what I have not grown in myself. I'm an, I am an extravagant giver. So the very pediatrics of giving starts out in the Old Testament with the tenth part of. They call it the tithe. Tithe means tenth part of. And a lot of people, they don't believe tithing is for the New Testament. And yet, you'll find tithing in the Hebrews, in the epistle to the Hebrews. It said, here men that died gave tithe. You also find it in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus said, you tithe of mint, you tithe of anise, you tithe of this and that. He said, but you've left the weightier matters. He says there, don't leave tithing undone. But make sure you take care of this business over here too. So if Jesus was going to do away with the tithing, that, that was a good place, Brother Kenny, for him to do away with it. But Jesus didn't do away with it. He says, don't leave that undone. Which means that he still wants us to tithe or another way of say, saying it is to support ministry in the earth. And the tithe, which in the Hebrew means tenth part of, so if God blesses you with a dollar, you give him a dime. Yeah. Minimum. If God gives you uh, $20, you give him $2. Yeah. Minimum. If God blesses you with $200, are you tracking with me? You give him $20. Wow. Minimum. Now, in order to grow in the grace of giving, if God gives you 20000 then you, <laughs> then you give him two stacks, right? You give him 2,000. Now, it's going to be hard for you to give God two stacks if you're not used to giving him $2. Why? Because you have not grown in the grace of giving. Because if somebody gives you a $20,000 check, or electronically deposits $20,000 in your bank account, Jesus might be your Savior, but money sure make you happy. Won't it? Y'all play me like y'all know what I'm talking about. Go in tomorrow and they bring you in the office and say, we're giving you a $20,000 increase. 
It'd be all over Facebook. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! In the pandemic, I got a $20,000 raise. We had a sister who was working for us, and on her job, she got a $20,000 raise, and she said, well, I, I can't work anymore. I said, I praise the Lord, because I, I can't give you a $20,000 raise, and I ain't trying to block nothing. And she was a giver, too. Are you tracking with me? See, that's growing in the grace of giving. If your hand is all, always like this, nothing coming out, Nothing coming in. But see, when you open your hand to God, when you open your hand to God, it, it leaves your hand, but it don't leave your life. Yes. Bianca, I said it leaves your hand, but it don't leave your life. When you sow it, when you give it, it's like that farmer who puts seed in the ground. And that harvest is going to come back. It's got to, it's got to give the increase. The script. <laughs> so he says, complete this grace. And that's part of my job, y'all. That's part of my job. And this is the tough part of it. This is the tough part of it, Richard. To train people in this area of giving. Because guess what? Out of everything, Melody, that we do or are growing in, one of the toughest areas to grow in is in giving. The devil is going to resist you in giving. And anything that you repudiate, you cannot reciprocate. <laughs> if you repudiate giving money, then it's not going to be reciprocated in your life. I don't have a problem giving. I'll give in a minute. They say, well, we need, certain, uh, we need a certain amount of money uh, to do this, that, and the other. I'm first one in line. Because I know it leaves my hand, but it don't leave my life. And God doesn't only... Brenda, he don't, Sister Brenda, he don't only do it by giving you money back. But every week that you're not in the intensive care unit, <laughs> did you hear what I said? That's money right there. Every week that you're not in a car accident, See, God takes care of us. Yes. No, no, you can't pay God to do anything. We can't merit our way into a miracle. God's going to do it because he loves us. But what he wants us to do is to grow in the grace and the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. In other words, we, there's a grace for giving in us, but somebody has to help grow us. Paul says to Titus, finish it. Verse 7, he says, but as you abound, which means to increase, but as you abound in everything, here we go. In the church, we got people who have faith. We got people who can talk. We got people who are very knowledgeable. We got people who are very diligent. And we got people who love their pastors and their church leaders. He says, see that you abound in this grace also. That is a commandment that we are to abound, Shay, that we are to increase in giving. And many of you all responded on Sunday when we talked about the lights. I don't know how many did it. I, I suppose quite a few did. But listen, if you had it and you didn't do it, you haven't grown in your grace. You haven't grown in the grace of giving. My first job in the kingdom was drummer. I was 11 years old and uh, started playing the drums. That was my first job. Didn't know how to play. And our family had come to that church and uh, 
a lady named Shirley. She looked over and said, come play the drums. And I suppose the Holy Spirit was working on her. And so I went over there and I got on the drums. And I started, I wanted to play the guitar. And my brother wanted to play the drums. And, uh, but God didn't give me the grace to play the guitar. God gave me the grace to keep a beat. So the drummer's first beat is... That's the, you know, that's the easy one. That's, that's the drummer's first beat. And that's all I could do what was, was, was keep time. 11 years old. And back then, it wasn't like it is now. You got to come in knowing how to play. <laughs> but I was on there, man. I was doing my thing, you know. 11 years old. And then 12 years old, I was a little better. I was getting better every year. 13, 14, 15. I played those drums for free until I was 28 years old at that same church. And I remember they raised an uh, offering for me and the guy that was on the organ, Dwight Washington, and they gave me $10. I don't know what they gave him. And I got $10 for playing from 11 <laughs> to 28. I need to see the union steward. Because I played, I played my pants out. I, I played, broke sticks, went and bought equipment, did all of that. I, I play so, man, we'd be in there. And I play so, and it'd be crisscrossing and stuff like that. Man, I play. Then I feel the spirit. I throw my sticks. <laughs> and then when I saw Buddy Rich on the Saturday Night Live, and he came in, and he came in, he was playing on everything until he got to the drum. So I did that. The pastor let me do that. <laughs> well, I had it. And I'll never forget, we was at a state meeting. And we, it was so good, and we were playing, and everybody was shouting, and man, we were going, do, 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 and we were going, do, 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 and the spirit was really high. And the guy was jealous. He started taking the drum. There were about five, six hundred people there, and I was playing, and he started taking the drums. He take it, I played it, and then he took some more, and I kept on playing. He took the bass, all I had left was the hi-hat and the snare. And they would still shout. And finally, the superintendent made him stop taking them. Ten dollars. But I had seed in the ground. I had seed in the ground. Now, when I was a drummer, I wasn't a tither. Not back then. I was young, you know. Uh, I'd heard about tithing, but that was a lot of money. I'd get my, my little check, two, three hundred dollars, thirty dollars. I mean, I mean the federal government took most of all that. And I got the I got the net. I don't know how much of a net it was gonna be to hold me. <laughs> and 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 you supposed to tithe off the whole thing, which will be the gross. Because the scripture says all your increase. So if you get $300, that's 30. Now, uh, the federal government takes theirs first. Then the state takes theirs. And then the county takes theirs. You know why? Because they know if they don't take it. <laughs> they're not going to get it. And, and, then, and then, then, then you got to give God his. 
See, Jesus said, give me a coin. He said, whose inscription is this? They said, Caesar. He says, give Caesar what is due Caesar and give God what is, same word, right? Give Caesar what is due Caesar. Give God what is due God. God has blessed me so abundantly with so many different streams of income now that my uh, family love account, this is money I just give away to, to family, to friends, uh, to my mentors, that that amount is more than some people make in a whole year. But, and I, I didn't even look at it. It just so happened I looked at it one time and I was like, wow. And that's my parents. <laughs> See, I don't look at it. I don't look at it on purpose because I don't want my flesh to get involved. Because your flesh be saying, oh, you, uh, you can get two or three suits with this. <laughs> so I don't look at it. I give my mother and father, my, my daughters, all that's in there, all that's in there. And the Lord just makes it up. <laughs> the Lord just makes it up. Now, one of my daughters is laughing. She's here tonight, and she's laughing because she, she, don't, she don't get any of that family. She don't get the direct money. But, but, but she, ain't, she ain't had to pay a light bill. She, she ain't had to pay no rent. So she get mad on the job up and quit. Now, you know you can't do that unless you got a backup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's privilege right there, ain't it? Some of our kids, not just her, some of our kids don't know how well they got it. We didn't have a cell phone when we were 15. In? Let me get back on the message. Yeah, yeah, and 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 don't do it for them. Well, you got you got something on your hands. I, I'm, I'm out of time. See that you abound. Is this good? Yes. Is this good? It's good. See that you abound. Thank you, Lord. See that you abound, that you grow in this grace of giving. It's a grace. It's a grace, y'all. So I, I, I encourage people. I say, I say if you are no giver, become a giver. Do something. See, in the Old Testament, if you were in poverty, then you would bring a handful of fine flour. If that's, if, if that's the best you could do, you brought a handful of fine flour. Fine flour. That's my best. And if you had it going on like Donkey Kong, you would have bring a ram. Because a ram with the horns was the best. But it wasn't so much, Michelle, it wasn't so much equal gifts in amount, Sarah. It was equal commitment. That we are all committed to do this. And as a result of pastoral oversight, I've been pastoring over 25 years now, been in church most of my life, and I thank God, have no regrets. It is rare that people who get saved grow in the grace of giving. It's rare. Even in a church like this, I can almost tell you every week what the offering will be. You know why? Because the same people Give the same thing all the time. 
It's kind of like working out. I mix my workouts up. I'll cycle, I'll walk, I'll run, I'll do strength training because muscles have memory. And after a while, if you don't change it up, you don't grow. So since I've been in fitness a long time, I know how to, I know how to make my muscles grow. I know how to make, I, I know how to challenge that memory. So, um, you know, I can go, I've gone now to 225 on the bench. And then when I come down from 225, 135 is easy. But I had to grow up to that by adding more weight. But a lot of people stay infants in their giving. Or not infants so much, they might grow a little bit and be toddlers or just children. <laughs> grow in the grace of giving. Do you want to grow? Do you want to grow? Do you want to grow? I'm your giving coach. I'm not teaching this and ministering this because we need some more money here at the church. But you need to grow. Don't be like my uh, grandson who's growing in his generosity. He likes, uh, I, I like salt and vinegar chips. Lay's. Anybody like Lay's salt and vinegar chips? I don't eat them all the time, but uh, I really do like them. And um, my daughter bought a brand new bag. It's, it's blue. <laughs> and she bought the chips. And I saw the new bag in the pantry. And it smiled at me. It's a fresh new bag, hadn't been opened. So I got it and I opened it up. And, and, and the smell wafted up. I was home by myself, Pastor Hobson, so I was really enjoying this. And, and since it was a fresh bag, none of them had been broken. So they were still, you know. Those are the good ones. That's when it's really good. It's fresh, you know, right out of the back. And I got me a little plate there, and I... And then, Bianca, I sealed the bag back up, put it up put it in there. And then I sat out with some lemonade, watching Seinfeld. So he comes home to, to, to our house. And he goes in the pantry, he gets the chips. And I'm sitting at the table, and he walks by and he says, these are my chips. <laughs> and he keeps on. <laughs> my, my kids would never got away with that. I would have took the whole bag and ate them. But the grandkids, you know, they get away with a bunch of stuff. And uh, he said, these are my chips. But I understand he's, he don't understand. And if he do, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't grown in generosity and sharing. Isn't it, isn't it something you have to teach kids how to share? That we are born selfish? <laughs> that we are born saying it's mine? You ever try to take something away from a little kid? Little baby, you can't hardly get it. Grow in the grace of giving and you'll experience a good life in every area of your life. 
Please stand. But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. You know what my prayer is for you? That in the next 12 months, you'll be able to give $1,000. And that in the next, if you're not there already, you, you'll be able to give $1,000 away and it won't even bother you. That's my prayer for you. Excel in giving. Excel in giving. And God will accelerate his blessings in your life. He'll do it. Father, we thank you for this fellowship around your word. I thank you for every family represented here tonight, every family on social media. And I pray, Father God, that you would increase us so much and give us so much that to, that to give away $1,000 won't bother us at all. For you said you give seed to the sower and multiply our seed sown. We thank you for that. We thank you for multiplying our seed sown. You said in Mark 4 that the seed knows what to do, and it should spring forth. We don't even know how, but we know that it will. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. We know that there will be a harvest, and we give you praise, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God a hand clap praise offering, if you will. <laughs> lift up a like, lift up a heart, lift up a smiley face. Give God a shout mouth of praise. Join me in the morning at 630 for First Hour Prayer on Facebook Live, James William Jackson, or YouTube, James William Jackson as well at 715, and the Praise Indie Bible Study at 8 a.m. I need your help to make it successful, and those of you who are here as well. God bless you. Traveling grace be with you. If you need prayer, I'll be up here to pray for you.